Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, so this is the story of what happens when you let malt sit in kegs that were questionably sanitized. Um, I thought I did a pretty good job, but apparently not. Um, so there was probably residual yeast in this keg. Uh, <laughs> this video is going to be in three parts. First part is this explanation, so hi. And second part is the truncated brew day. I kind of chopped it down a little more than I do usually. And then the third part is going to be a review of these very questionable beers with Jenny. I'm going to try to convince her to drink them. She said she won't. She also told me that they're going to taste really, really bad. So I said I would watch her taste them. I need moral support on this one. If you want to jump around, I'm going to put the chapter links kind of in the description. I also have links to all the equipment I use in the description if you guys are wondering what I'm using, I get a lot of questions, or if you want to recreate this exactly, which you shouldn't, like, at, at all. This is called what not to do. Don't, like, don't do this. It's bad. What if they're delicious? Then I'll re-record the intro. And are they going to make us sick? That's a real question. I don't think so. Should we Google that? I'm 90% sure we're not going to get sick. Going forward, I'll make videos like this anytime I screw up a beer. I think it's really valuable to figure out what you shouldn't be doing. That's how you learn. So learn through me. Don't screw up yourself. Okay, so here's what happened. Um, so basically what you should gather from this is don't let work sit. And especially don't let wort sit if it's in a sealed container that's airtight, aka a keg. Don't do it. It's a bad idea. All right. So what I was doing is I was waiting for my hops for my dry hop to arrive. They showed up 11 days later. Obviously way too much time. So um, over Labor Day, I had a friend in town and, uh, you know, the brewery's a spare bedroom. So we set up a little cot, whatever, uh, for him to stay. And... Uh, that's always a bad idea because around 80% of the time when we have someone stay in this room, a beer explodes. So in theory, these kegs were sanitized. There's nothing to ferment in them. So I left them without an airlock, without like anything but like a completely sealed keg. It sat for five days. Day five, first day my friend arrives. So around 7 a.m. the next morning, we hear a hissing sound in the brewery. And, uh, I'm a paranoid person, so I run out butt naked. What is that noise? The pressure release valve on one of the kegs had, um, released. Huh. So, when you have what could be between 60 and 130 pounds of pressure in a keg, and the CO2 starts releasing, it also starts releasing a lot of beer, even though these kegs are only about half full. So, I have these beers, just who knows what the hell happened, immaculate fermentation. So after throwing these beers in the shower and releasing all the pressure and just leaving the pressure release valves open in case they keep fermenting, I realize it is not a good idea to spend 30 more dollars on hops to do the dry hop additions that I had planned. This, is, this was supposed to be the NEPA test, right? So... I decided I had a bunch of random dry yeast packs sitting in my refrigerator. Uh, why not just throw different ones in each keg? So I threw US04, which is English ale yeast, in one. And the other one I put the Weinstefaner strain of lager yeast in. It's supposed to be able to ferment at a higher temperature. I threw a glycol jacket around them, let them sit at 65 degrees. They were already fermenting at around 70, 75, so I don't even think it even mattered. I don't know if these yeasts are going to do anything to this beer. Like, who knows what yeast was fermenting it to begin with. It could have been a, like, freaking Belgian with a Weinstefaner. So before the, I added the extra yeast, the beer still smelled amazing. It smelled like a Nipa. All the, like, amazing Amarillo Galaxy and HBC 586 hops were apparently not that affected. It didn't smell like an infection. It didn't look like an infection, really. It just looked like Krausen. Um, so I was like, screw it. Uh, so it didn't really ferment after I added the new yeast. Um, I got a few bubbles, um, like a few bubbles per minute. Like it was like on its downhill away from 
fermenting essentially. So I don't really know what's going to happen. Okay, so now let's go to the shortened brew day. So today we are doing round two of the NEPA experiment. So today we're going to basically make eight gallons of the base NEPA recipe that I tested a while ago. You can see that video here. And what we're going to do in the end is split the batch and ferment with London 3 yeast and Imperial Juice yeast. Just based on the recipe, this is the same recipe I used last time, just just scaled up a bit. So I'm going to use 12 grams of calcium chloride and four of each Epsom salt and gypsum. Okay, so for our hops, we have HBC 586, the super mango-y one. Um, kind of reminds me of uh, Mosaic a little bit. Amarillo and Galaxy, and they all go in the hop stand. So we're doing 4.4 ounces of HBC 586. That ran me out of HBC 586. I gotta order more. Woo! All right, and 1.5 ounces of Amarillo and 1.5 ounces of Galaxy. And these go in a 176 degree hop stand for 10 minutes. Okay, so our single hop addition. That's insane. There's so many hops. Okay, so um, then after that, um, we're going to do dry hops on day one. Oh, shit. That means I need some today. Okay, so I'm rush ordering some HBC 586 so that we can get it here before fermentation is over. <laughs> okay, I have some HBC 586 coming to me. Because of my gross oversight in the amount of hops that I had, I'm actually going to brew it today, but I'm going to... So I was always planning on fermenting these in kegs um, just because I have like one wraparound... Um, chiller so I, I like don't have enough space essentially to ferment them and I kind of want them to ferment the same so kegs are an easy way to do that so I'm just gonna chill them down I'm gonna transfer them into the kegs that are super sanitized like sanitized to the teeth and then I'll pitch the yeast in say uh three days because this is supposed to take four days to get to me so then we can continue our hop additions as planned. Um, I've, I've let wort sit before and haven't had a problem. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty acidic, so uh, it takes a minute to like really become a problem. And I might even just throw it in my kegerator to chill it down just to make sure. Um, but anyway, we can continue now. So for malt on this guy, we're doing 15 pounds and 10 ounces of two row and two pounds and 10 ounces of oats. Okay, so I've got 10 gallons of RO water. I'm gonna put eight in the kettle to heat up and hopefully our grain will fit in after that. I'm gonna add my 12 grams of calcium chloride, four grams of Epsom and four grams of gypsum. Okay, so this is now at about 158 or about a little over 70 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to cut the heat using my brew in a bag bag. So our mash temp is going to be around 152 or around 63 degrees Celsius. And this is our 15 pounds, 10 ounces of two row. And now our two pounds, 10 ounces of oatmeal. And we are mashing for 45 minutes. Okay, so now I'm just gonna actually transfer this bag into a bucket and then I'm gonna stick my screen in my green bucket that it fits in and just drain it from there so I don't have to worry about doing the whole squeeze thing here and I'll squeeze it once there's a lot less liquid in it because this has got a bit right now. Okay, so we've got about six and a half gallons here. I'm gonna throw in, so we want eight gallons. It's a lot. 
I want to take my refract meter reading and then determine how much we're going to add. So we're at about 17 bricks. So I'm just going to plug that into the dilution calculator and wash my hands off. Okay, so our gravity is 1.072 right now. We want our pre-boil gravity to be 1.06. So I'm going to do the gravity correction, 1.072. Wanted gravity, 1.06. Current volume is just under seven. I'm gonna put 6.75. So we need to add 1.35 gallons of water. Okay, so we're boiling now and we're just gonna let this boil for 60 minutes and then we're gonna start chilling and do our only hop addition at 174 degrees uh, for 10 minutes. So I've got a new chiller by Jaded and I cannot wait to try it. Uh, this is supposed to be one of the fastest possible and that is obviously what I am looking for. Okay, so our boil is done. I'm gonna kill my heat and start this chiller. I'm really excited. So we're only gonna chill it down to 176. So I'm probably just gonna let this go for like a minute and then we're gonna throw our hops in in a hop bag for 10 minutes and then chill it all the way down. I have my 4.5 ounces of HBC 586 and one and a half ounces of Amarillo and Galaxy. And I put some uh, yeast nutrient in here just for kicks. Pop stand is done. I'm going to start the chiller. All right. It's been 10 minutes and that got us down to about 80 degrees. Our groundwater is only about 75. So I'm going to just call it. And we're going to transfer this batch into these two kegs. Um, I'm going to split it up. We have eight gallons left. I'm going to go ahead and take my pre-boil while I'm here. All right, so I'm gonna kind of estimate um, and just watch how this goes down. And our pre-boil gravity looks like it's 16 bricks. And 16 bricks means 1.068. <laughs> we beat our original gravity. So our original gravity was supposed to be 1.063. We got 1.068. Uh, fermenter volume is gonna be, I'm gonna say 7.0. 7.5 just because there's a chiller in there. The one thing that's nice about doing a split batch is that it's not as heavy as five gallons to carry up the stairs. So both of these kegs have floating dip tubes in them. Uh, it's going to make it way easier to transfer them out off of the tube. Um, I mean, honestly, we could throw these on carbonation once they're all fermented out and just serve it from the vessel it's in now. Uh, the only weird thing is um, we're doing a dry hop addition, so it might get a little chunky. Well, I'm just gonna clean up here now. Uh, thanks for watching. I will check back in with you guys when we dry hop in a few days because I'm waiting on my HBC 586 to come because I'm ill prepared as usual. Um, but. Once those are going, um, we're just going to throw them in a hot bag, one in each, and then we're going to do another addition in the same hot bag. And yeah. It's been three weeks since the addition of other hops. Um, I am going to serve them out of the fermentation kegs. There's floating dip tubes in them, so the top should be relatively clear, I would assume. I haven't done this before really, except for the actually the um the river brew we did the same thing um so i just uh force carbonated it i put it on 40 psi for around 18 to 22 hours give or take um so hopefully it's carbonated a little bit yeah i don't trust these beers so i'm not gonna hook them up to the kegerator i don't want to clean those lines like from an infection standpoint like cleaning them via beer is like stupid enough so we're gonna use some picnic taps Fortunately, I have two, and we're going to put lagers in the pint glasses and the, I guess it would be a Nipa pale ale, whatever, ale, in the Belgian glasses. 
So normally a sour is almost always an ale. Can you have a sour lager ever? Yeah, you can sour anything. So I feel like hypothesis time. I would like to hypothesize that the New England pale accidental sour is going to theoretically taste like a not very good unfruited sour. Or just a really shitty pale ale. Well, but don't you expect it to be kind of... I don't expect either of them to be That's my hypothesis. This, I think, is going to taste like asshole. I think I'm going to let you stay with that one. But we're going to both try and both. Oh, don't make me. All right, so I'm going to hook up these picnic taps, and let's get to it. I'm going to put the heads in this so it doesn't explode. This one's a little finicky. Can you help? All right. These are probably going to be really phony, so I'm going to um, purge it a bit. Do you want me to play the purge theme, the like the siren that they play when they drive around while you're doing it? I have never watched that movie, nor will I ever. One's on. That's fast. All you gotta do is pop them on. The hardest part is actually forcing it onto me. <sighs> I'm at the water. This is really clear. This is the ale. Interesting. Can you smell it yet? It definitely looks hazy still. It's definitely cloudy. It smells kind of just like a little... It smells kind of yeasty. Oh, should I purge more? I don't know. I just wanted to dump it for you so you could start fresh. You're asking me? I'm just the drinker. All right, we're gonna call that good. It looks like it's pouring, okay. All right. Oh, the truth. Here, hold this. Maybe over carbonated. This is the lager. Which is cloudy and like lemon colored. It looks like meringue pie. It doesn't smell bad. The problem it's is you could, a nice never, head. You could never that. recreate this, could you? No. It looks like lemon meringue pie. And it's weird for a lager to have that kind of cloud, too. Why does it have that? Um, there's uh, a lot. There's oatmeal in it. I don't know if I've ever had a lager with oatmeal, have I? Um, it shouldn't happen. That's why. Oh, that was the mistake? It's supposed to be a Nipa. I brewed these Wait, as a Nipa. The lager? They're both the same base beer. So they're both, you know that Nipa that we were trying to test to do the triple yes. taste? That's this base beer. Huh. So Interesting. Yeah. So they're, And what exactly is the difference? Just the yeast is the difference? Yeah. All right. So here's the ale. The, obviously, and the fermentation is different. Who knows? One was lager and one was I have no f***ing clue. So if these really are, it's, it's, you can't even call them what you're calling them. They're Mystery Beer 1 and Mystery Beer 2. Basically. All right. They really look very similar. Although, interestingly, and you tell me if I'm just a map. Oh, no, it's just the lighting. So to say your lager, look, your Mystery Beer 1, your, mis your pint Mystery Beer looks lighter in color. And I don't know if that's possible or if it's just the lighting. Might be the lighting and the glass. The glasses are probably different. Okay. I mean, because it, be, it wouldn't make a difference whether it was the top of the keg or one beer in, right? No, because it is the top of the keg. All right, what do you want to start with? Because we can start with whatever you want. Let's start with this one. All right, well, we should start with the other one because I got head for days. I hope you do. Mm. Should we plug in Isaac? No, what the fuck? There's it doesn't smell bad. It smells pretty yeasty though. It smells a little farty. Yeah. But, I, like, you know, some, I don't, I wonder if there's any Brett in it. It's almost got, like, the goatiness of a Brett. Well, like, like a foot. It smells when I say, like a foot. Yeah, when I say farty, I don't mean, like, it I'm doesn't like, like shit. Is it it's, my feet that smell? I just took off boots. Sometimes, like, beers <laughs> are that, like, stinky thing. <laughs> I'm so nervous. I don't know how to place that smell. It's something kind of familiar, but, and it is something, almost, like, overripened fruit. Yeah. Okay, you go first. I wonder if it's wild yeast that's in there. Go first. Okay. I'll go at the same time. One, two, three. It's not as bad I as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> it's a little okay. weird. It feels weird. It's Brett. There's Brett in it. So that's basically, isn't Brett similar to sour? So Brett's a kind of bacteria. 
it's Bretomyces, so it's a kind of yeast, but it's a wild yeast. Right. Um, Wait, I need to revisit It's like this. a breaded pale ale. It's not bad. I think if it sits a little longer, it'll... It's it's very slick. The over-ripened fruit is kind of the closest thing I can get, but it's not super fruity. It's just that very, very back end is like a super ripe nectarine. Yeah. I don't feel like it's super hoppy, which, like, I don't It's get... not, because, well, A, the only hops were in the hop stand, so they were only at 186. Um, you but say that like I know what that means. They know what that means. I they know. know what that means. So they, there was no hops in the boil. It's after boil. I think I could drink this. Like, by choice. When you say if it sits, like, in a glass or more in the keg sits? It sits in the keg. And how do you think it'll change? I don't know. It might get more bready, actually. People, if it gets more bready, bretty or bready, like you said. Brett. Brett. Because I was going to say. Like a bro named Brett. I feel like there are, this is the kind of beer that people would drink on purpose. Yeah. It's like not quite my bag. Mm -hmm. I'm, I like fruited sours. Like I've gotten into those. Those are kind of my intro into sours. Mm. Well, that's a mango. Sure. Why not? I, so I am, I don't know if people might hate me for this, but I really like beer mosas. It smells gross. Ew, then why are we doing it? I've never had this, but I'm going to use it in a beer. There's a lot, there's a lot of added sugar. You should get, um, organic. Organic doesn't mean it doesn't have a lot of added sugar. I know no, it has a lot of added like, sugar. Look at the ingredients. If you're going to make beer from it, if it's from concentrate, doesn't that fuck with it? No. Where should I get it? Um, should I go to, No, think, there's a, there's a, do you I'll think, I think of the store. We used to get it for the restaurant. Oh, really? But like. Oh, wow. That's great. Really? Put some in it. It's so it's like, so good. Here's what I was saying. I really like beer mosas. <laughs> with like it's orange juice with like a lager or something yeah. like that. I so mean, this just is kind of like touch a, of that though. It really changes it. It's fucking awesome. Brunch beer. That's a total brunch beer. Are people gonna yell at you for doing that? That's Although you know what, I don't care. If you're the one drinking it, you should drink the way you want to drink. I need. I think I need a refrigerator this one. Um, Except for gold tequila. Don't ever drink gold tequila. It's not a thing. Yeah. That doesn't suck. That's interesting. That's great. I really like it with the mango. Uh, you know what? I wonder if I may, I might just throw that in. Well, that's what I was going to say. With a beer that's already fermented, can you, can you fruit it after the fact? Yeah. It'll, it might ferment again, but you'll still... Do you know what the alcohol is on this yet? Oh, I didn't take a reading. And I'm curious... A, what I don't know if, how this works with carbonated, but... um. We'll check one of the beers that you already know the alcohol content that's already carbonated. No. Okay. I don't, I don't want to do things. It's Friday. It's Friday night. I'm off work on a Friday night. Can we talk about that? Great. This is like what normal people do is hang out on a Friday night. Not me. I just work on beer stuff. Yeah, because I'm usually not here to keep you I also work Saturdays, so it doesn't matter to me. So the ABV was supposed to be 7.4%. It doesn't taste like that. It tastes lighter than that. Um, so our original gravity was 1.068, and our final gravity is supposed to be 1.012. We're getting seven bricks pretty solidly. Actually, no, it did ferment down a lot. The ABV is 8%. Oh, so it is, that's, it does not. It doesn't taste like it. No. It, it's. I would say if you've got fruit to throw it in, whether it's uh, mango or. I mean, like those kind, of, those tropical fruits would work. Like I said, it was kind of nectar. I'm getting like, peaches or nectarines or yeah. mangoes. I'm almost getting a lime now from it. I'm gonna um take the gravity. Maybe down. key lime. Yeah. I don't necessarily get. There's just a little hint of citrus. It is. I do. I actually like it. Don't. Hate We're gonna call this magic beer. COVID beer. This is fucking. This is the weirdest experiment. If you need to clear that keg, you can... I'll take some bottles if you want to Hashtag drink half the keg. Drink half the keg, guys. So um, they, they fermented down to about the same. This one might be, like, slightly well, less alcohol. It looks the same. So if this ends up tasting exactly the same, then you've I'm got a be, whole lot of weird beer. <laughs> I'm going to dump all this mango I bought. Uh, all right. I don't think it smells the same. It doesn't. This has way less um, aroma. Yeah, there's, no, there's not the fruit. It's still a little funky, but there's no fruit. It's a little funk. I don't like this one, though, I don't think. 
That's the same font, I think. Oh. I have one, two, three. One, two, three. Cheers. Cheers. More sour. Interesting. More sour, no slickness. Mm -mm. I almost like this one better. I don't know. It had to, I had to sit on it for a second because it, it was it was but really sharp up front. You know, I think the lager strain is accentuating the malt, so it tastes a little sweeter. So it's, these are backwards for me. This one, I get the tart right up front, and then it kind of go it like yeah. finishes. Yeah, but it finishes sweeter than this. This one starts pretty light, but then it's, it finishes with that like fermented fruit thing for me. So these are like... I like this one better. This one... I really hope we're not giving ourselves gastrointestinal problems. No, I looked it up. And it's, it doesn't taste like anything bad, bad, you know? It just tastes like... You know, honestly, um, what probably happened was, like, during transferring, we were outside. So there's yeast floating in the air. It's... Honestly, this is probably, like, our courtyard culture. That's a really cool name for a beer, too. Col courtyard culture? Yeah. I mean, we have a serious courtyard culture, just There's in a, general. For the record, you guys have seen us outside of a small round table. That is like our secondary round table. That's the, the pretty round table. Well, the original round table is where not pretty things happen. There's been a lot of feelings at that table. There's been a lot of tequila at that table, a lot of whiskey. There's been a lot of courtyard culture. A lot of <laughs> bitching and moaning and laughing. <gasps> Cookie food, we eat a lot out there. The round table is where our version of like, Melrose Place. Yeah, totally. Um, okay, wait. So this is interesting. The organisms behind the funk. I mean, this is probably stuff that a lot of people know, but sours are new to me. So this, let me see, just, sorry. Also, when she says sour, it's not, like, really tart. It's not lactic sour. It's more of a Brett sour. So, like, um, it's a little goaty. It's got a slight tartness, but nothing overpowering, nothing that's going to make your mouth pucker. No, it, it doesn't have the, like, sour... Like, there are some sours that have that, like, Sour Patch Kid yeah. intenseness. Yeah. No, like, if someone didn't tell you that this was a funky beer, you might not know unless you're really, like, um, familiar with what Brett tastes like. Which, I love Brett. I love a goaty beer. I can't drink a ton of them, but I do enjoy the flavor. I, I goaty honestly... Goaty is not a description that I've really heard before, but, like, I get it. It's like horse blanket. I don't know what that means. It's like a blanket you put on a horse. I don't, I don't know. I'm not a horse girl. Then why would you we should that? ask Kelsey. I would say, <laughs> in terms of like trying, like, goaty, like goat cheese is kind of where I'm barnyard. going. Barnyard. Like, yeah, and so with wine, barnyard is like, I understand barnyard specifically with wines, but it's usually very grassy. This is much more of the like, barnyard for me with wine is the outside of the barn. This yeah. Is the inside it's of like barn. hay. This is like hay. See, I don't and get like that. animal sweat. Animal, yes. Hay, no. I do not think for me this doesn't have like the greenery of grass or straw or hay or anything. It is the the animal thing. I get the kind of, but yeah. it's. I mean the the funky. smell and the smell of hay to me is just like a sweet like, um, like almost sickly sweet. It's like the when the hay starts getting all gross and like fermenting and then there's cow shit and then wet. there's it's the wet wet yeah wet. Wet, 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 wet. Yeah. I get it. I, uh, for the record, you know, just so you know, guys, let's not forget that uh, beer for a long time was safer than water, so we're apparently okay. Sick. Yeah, these are interesting. I would say if you don't hate either of these, treat them, like if you're going to play with them, you want to throw fruit in one of them and don't throw fruit in the other just to see what happens. Yeah, I think I would throw fruit in this one. I don't mind this one at all. This has, like, that sulfuric lager -y taste to me, which I love. I like this one better. Well, now it's got mango in it. Of course you do. Well, I mean, no, but I liked it before anyway. <laughs> I think I just, for me, the, the, like, journey, the way it finishes, there's something really, like, ripe, like, overripe about it. How I did like. these not turn out disgusting? Because I think people do this on purpose sometimes. I do too, but I did not. Because the magic of these ingredients is they're simple and they work together and you're accidentally, you know, magic. You put love into it and so it's delicious. Because, I our love, courtyard cult, because of the courtyard culture. I love that this is our courtyard culture. I'm obsessed with that. 
I might I might harvest this yeast just to keep using it. Courtyard culture and we need another clever name. Cause there are two beers. All right, do you want to drink some good beers? I would never say no to a challenge. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do a blind taste test. Stick around for next time with Flora Brewing and her neighbor. And her neighbor. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Uh, so if you want to get all the videos early, you can become a member. There's a join link above. And I want to thank my newest member, Tom Clegg. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. And I will see you guys next time. Uh, this video is going to have three, three parts. I forgot how to use fingers. They don't know you're talking to somebody. It's fine. Theoretically, wouldn't this be the equivalent of like a wild bee, a wild ale? So could this just be a sour? Yes. What if it's a new magic syrup for us? They found me! <laughs> like immaculate fermentation. Ha! <laughs> I love it. Okay, now Yeah, actually, these might not suck. Um, I just smelled it and it doesn't smell great. Um, and I use the white. I gotta figure out how to pronounce this. Fine Stefaner. Fine Stefaner. Fine Stefaner. Thank you. Wait. Yeah, so I, my, did I say it right? Yeah, but here's what's interesting. So, and maybe this is just a dumb thing. Fine Stefaner is actually the name of a Hefeweizen that we carry at the restaurant. It's a brand. It's, it's also it's, a brewery. It's like, the Fine Stefaner is the, It's the oldest brewery in the world. Right, but so, is a half of, I thought a Hefeweizen was an ale. Is it a lager? Yeah, half of eggs and yeah. It's just their their brewery name. Well, that's very confusing if it's a lager it yeast and they're making. It, it's just their brewery and like it, the beer style. If they could make that clear, that'd be great. They have a great fest beer too. Yes, they do. Um, I I love their lager. That is my favorite lager. I've never had their lager. Oh, sh really? Oh, I don't think I have anymore. I found like a random one sitting in the racks the other day. I was like, fuck yeah. Casual beers. Can you just come here so I'm not just looking off into the distance? My hypothesis. What? That was like putting sanitizer and it was just shooting out and I was like, why isn't it working? Oh, is it open? <laughs> yeah. While we're here, guys, I just want to say thanks for your likes and comments. And I like Sarah. She's nice. So I'm going to see that. You know I that. That right? was the point. <laughs>